This is where you'll see a lot of your athletes will open up early. The key's upper body back delivery foot stays on the ball. Here's pillar five for Lechna, pillar five for Harding, pillar five for Stalt. Reversing thrower, non-reversing thrower, shoulders, big extended radius. Today, the thing that we're going to talk about is, again is that monster finish, and really that's what we refer to in our throwing chain reaction system is pillar five and six. So pillar five is what we refer to as locking down power, and pillar six is finishing big, right? It's the delivery action. So I think what makes the finish difficult is it's a lower body, upper body sequence. So you have the action and sequence of the block arm, the block leg, the delivery arm, and the delivery leg. So what you're trying to establish is a long connection, whether it's the shot or the discus, you want what we refer to is the big punch in the shot, the big pull in the discus. Balance is a critical part of that. And again, just like we we're saying, it's super sequential. So timing is the key. And so being on balance, being timed up, it helps you sequence everything a lot better. So what we're going to do is, like I said, look at all those things. We'll start breaking it down. And so when it comes to the glide, one of the best examples is Valerie Adams. And again, you can just see there's going to be some elements keeping the shoulders back um, keeping the head back. This is where you'll see a lot of your athletes will open up early. But what we're going to be looking at is the keys upper body back delivery foot stays on the ball. And this was Valerie Adams PR. She won the world championships in 2011. And you're going to see that 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 glide foot never comes down. That's one of the big things. Last week, if you were on, I put that in and I was talking about hips back and opening the arms early. And big part of that was really supposed to say, don't let the foot drop that we covered in our members webinar that we did afterwards. And we kind of pointed that out and showed that a little more specifically. That's the key. You're going to notice we'll just, we'll just kind of bring it back and just watch her just kind of smash the crap out of it. And you see that nice linear punch. I mean, that ball is super straight and that's kind of the idea how the block gets in, how the hip gets ahead. A lot of people have a hard time finishing the throw or teaching their athletes how to reverse. And that has a lot to do with that foot and those shoulder positions. And that's that lower body, upper body sequencing. Okay. So what we're going to do is that's kind of looking at your glide. And what I thought I would do is kind of show you a comparison. Look at the common elements. So that's going to be one of the things we want to do when we're looking at all of our throwers. We don't want to confuse personal style with mechanics. You've heard me say that I, I put up a video on YouTube, I don't know, maybe seven months ago, eight months ago, and I got all kinds of crazy you know, heated comments. No, mechanics and style are totally, you know, they're, they're, they're different techniques. And what we always argue is the six pillars, the physics are generally the same. Everybody's execution is going to be slightly different. Um, looking here, like here's pillar five for Lechna, pillar five for Harding, pillar five for Stalt. Reversing thrower, non-reversing thrower, reversing thrower, right? Now, some of you guys refer to it as switching the feet. We always call it a reverse when we switch the feet at the end of the throw. So following through the whole throw versus just slamming the delivery side in. But you're going to notice again, shoulders, big extended radius, getting the hip ahead of the shoulder so that the shoulder whips into the throw. These are coming to some of the things we're going to talk about. And again, we're going to break that down when we look through our checklist. One of the things we talk about, again, kind of our recurring mantra at Arite Throws Nation is with our throwing chain reaction system, the throws happening, you know, an elite thrower, one and a half seconds, we would call it the student and the master. The student's taking two seconds. So the difference between that is a pro who's throwing 75 feet, amazing strength levels, years of development, technical mastery, to a developing thrower who's basically pretty close to hitting the same different, the same positions, but that half a second makes a massive difference. So everything's slight, but those details are where all of everything changes in that speed changes. So just kind of looking here, this is where we looked at like Kovacs compared to a beginning thrower. And you're gonna watch as I kind of show it again, just there, look at the positions. So when you look at the, the young guy who's throwing 50 something feet and he's new, this was a thrower who had actually just been doing this about a week and a half. He'd done some coaching and uses our system. And you could see that these positions are actually really close, but you're going to see how the pro has the shoulders back a little bit more level. You're going to see the height of the foot. And so, but generally these are very close, right? And so now is where you really see the difference. You really see how a pro is going to get that hip really through so that's going to enable them to connect to the shot much better. Whereas the young thrower, you can see it's just a little bit. He's lost contact with the ground a little sooner. The hip and the shoulder aren't nearly as pushed in. 
So everything just changes. They're super close though. So this, this young thrower is still hitting six pillars. It's going to take time to develop better patterns to be able to pick up that extra speed. And that's the key. So kind of saying that here's what, here's an example of, I just took the, the tail end right here. This is Tyson Jones. This is one of my throwers in 2018, high school national champion, new balance national champion. And again, you'll watch the same thing, how he's going to hit. And then he's going to get that nice big extension. So when you watch him in full speed and how he's going to come through, so now you'll see the, the full speed of the throw. And you're going to watch, he's going to come through and he's going to get that nice strike and everything's very efficient. And that's what we want to be looking at. So um, that brings me up. I'm going to have you a question. What part of your finish do you struggle with the most? Is it your block? Do you feel like you're falling off? Is it the reverse or is it staying in the ring? Some of you guys will have you know issues with foul troubles and you guys have something other than what I just put up. You guys can throw that in the chat. All right. So most of the time the block and falling off. So there's going to be a couple of things for that. And we're going to talk about that as we kind of break through and we'll 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 do more comparison and we'll show those key positions. Why I always emphasize in these workshops and in our trainings is that if everything's happening so fast, so if you're just trying to get to the finish and and thinking about it, you don't have enough time. That's why it's so critical to set things up. That's the whole concept behind our throwing chain reaction process. The, th the finish, but on that note, is perhaps one of the most complex, right? Because we talked about in the beginning, it's so sequential. There's all these different things going on. You're timing up block leg, block arm, delivery, and strike, and that's all happening in just tenths of a second. If you get it a little bit off or you, you know, you have a, you're know you have learning a new position, the timing on that is all off, and that's why it's always tricky for young throwers to be patient and not gauge everything by distance. you got to look at other variables and that sort of thing.